Good morning, church. My name is Justin Grimm. I serve as the director for Evangelical Mission and assistant to the bishop here in the St. Paul Area Synod. And while I wish I was with you in person, I'm coming to you from my basement office here in Shoreview. It was a great honor when Pastor Keith invited me to come and spend Palm Sunday with you uh, when we scheduled this a couple months ago. And I'm sad that we're not together, but grateful that we can gather virtually uh, from our homes and other places we might be tuning in. I wanted to say thanks to you before I turn to the Word this morning uh, for a, a special gift. You all uh, at St. Luke's just sent a, a, a rather significant gift to the Synod office to support our mission work here locally for our new congregations and our congregations under redevelopment. I, I can't say how impactful that gift is enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That generosity will help us as a synod together continue to do new and exciting things and support these efforts um, that are often in our ethnic-specific communities and other places of ministry to those on the margins. So thank you from the bottom of my heart and from the lives of the people that you are impacting. Our reading for today comes to us from the Gospel of St. Luke, the 22nd chapter. Jesus came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw. He knelt down and he prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, Jesus prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into this time of trial. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Will you pray with me, please? Gracious God, we come before you seeking your presence together as a body united over technology this day, but united around the gift of the grace that you pour out for us. I want to pray especially this day, Lord, that you would continue to bless the work of St. Luke's and Cottage Grove, Pastor Keith, and all the leaders there who are being creative and stepping forward this day and these days and providing your kingdom space to grow and to breathe on this earth, even in the midst of a pandemic. Quiet our hearts right now, Lord, and the anxieties and the fears and, and, and all the things that are overcoming us. God, help us to just pause for a few moments to hear your voice, to breathe your breath, to be reminded that you are a God who doesn't forsake us. Fill us with your spirit this day and open us, uh, open us up to your word. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Back in the early 90s, there was a contemporary Christian song that was entitled, Where Do I Go? And the chorus went something like this. Where do I go when I need a shelter? Where do I go? When I need a friend, where do I go? When I need some helping, where do I go? Back on my knees again. Apologize for my singing. But that song has been wrestling around in my brain over the last two or three weeks as I've thought about my own response in this time that we are in. Where do I go, I've wondered, in the face of a, a global pandemic that is shifting and altering the complete way that I function, that I live, that I lead? Where do I go in the face of anxiety and sadness and fear? Where do I go in, in the face of darkness at times seeming to be more powerful 
than the light. Where do I go, I wonder, in my own brain, in my own world? And, and oftentimes, I will say, this week I found that the place I go, figuratively at least, is back on my knees. Back on my knees in, in prayer to the divine that God might move. That God might act. That God might speak. Back on my knees in this desperate hope that I might hear the promise of God again. That God says to me and to you this day, church, I have you. You are mine. I mean, let's be real for a minute. This is a difficult time in our history as humanity. We're all in this together to steal the Twitter hashtag. And, and that's not just in this together by working hard for, for help and staying home and doing our part and not having worship together. We're all in this together because this virus impacts us all. And we as humans are wired to want to work for change. We as humans are wired to want to do and do. And we live in a society and a culture which says if you're not active and you're not doing uh, something, then you're probably not the right kind of person. you got to be busy. And we're at a time where the best thing we can do for the sake of our world is stay home not do. Of course, there are the exceptions, the heroes that are on the front line of this pandemic who are doing and, and are, are making amazing things happen and caring for those impacted by this. And God bless them and thank you if that is you. But for, the, for most of us, we can't go and fix and do right now. So where do we go? Where do you go, friend? In the face of hardship, in the face of uncertainty, in the face of Holy Week, a time when we're used to gathering together with family and friends and going through the last days of Jesus' life and the death into the resurrection, where do you go? I just want to suggest this morning that a good place to start is on your knees. On your knees in, a, in, in prayer, seeking and looking and longing for God, because something happens, friends, when we open our heart and our mind and our body up to be filled by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, that's not just advice from some pastor in his basement office today. It's not just advice from a 90s Christian contemporary song. No, this is it's wisdom that comes from the very Word of God. Yeah, we've all heard the stories of Jesus when, he's, when he tells us to pray without ceasing and all of that. But the gospel for today, to me, is one of the biggest calls in the whole scripture for us to be on our knees. Let's unpack that for a minute. This is taking place, the scripture from Luke that I read. These are towards the last days of Jesus' life on the earth. He, the heat is picking up and folks are starting to get concerned. Those in power and those that are oppressing are starting to get concerned because Jesus is starting a revolution and things are starting to happen. And, and they, they've had enough of this and they're hearing things about how Jesus is transforming the world and it's starting to threaten their very existence. So, so Jesus knows... But Jesus knows that people are out to get him. Jesus is aware that the work he's been called to do is, is difficult work. And he's aware of all those things. And, and he's at a point in his life where it's really hard for him, the humanity, the human side of Jesus, for him to go forward. For him to know how to move forward. He knows where he's supposed to go, but yet he's stuck and he's overwhelmed. And so what does he do? Well, Luke tells us he does what was his custom. He goes with his closest disciples and he goes to the Mount of Olives as was his custom, Luke tells us. And he prays. And in these few verses of Scripture, 
we get this intimate picture of Jesus the human, Jesus the Christ, his relationship with God the Father. So we have the Son talking to the Father. And in this, we see the human struggle of what Jesus is being asked to do as he desperately says to God, God, take this cup from me. It's too much. I don't know how I can do it. I'm not sure I can go forward. Please, Lord, take this plight, this work, this calling. Take it from me. But then in an instant, by the power of the Spirit, by the power of the knowledge of knowing that he's been called and he's been sent to this purpose, Jesus the Christ says, No, God, but not my will, your will be done. And Luke tells us he continues to pray even more earnestly and the Spirit fills him and the sweat becomes like blood, an indication even for us of the death that's coming. And he turns his whole being into conversation and communion with God and the Spirit. And there's this beautiful, holy, and intimate gathering between the Godhead. Wow. Wow. The power the power of this conversation, the power of this relationship, the power of Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit after going on his knees and asking God to fill him. Wow. Where did Jesus go? Back on his knees again. As he heads in, to that which waits for him. The, the holy week ups and downs. Heralded king to beaten criminal. To lot that he will face. And the only way he can do it is because of the power of God the Father with him. Wow. So what about you, friend? I wish I could see you. I wish we could have this conversation. I wish we could talk in, in person about where you're finding hope and strength these days. How are you doing? How is your faith? How is your reality today? Are you scared? Are you uncertain? Are you longing for things to be different? Are you wondering how this might play out. Are you wondering where God is? Do you feel forsaken? Or are you filled with hope, with joy, with knowledge that God has you? Or are you somewhere in between? Dear friends, wherever you find yourself this Palm Sunday, I pray that you know this. God promises to go with you through it all. God promises to walk with you through the ups and the downs and to carry you when you can't carry yourself. And God will and is doing that through the body of Christ even though we're scattered out. And Jesus, Jesus the Christ, the one who was sent for you goes ahead of you through these times too. And this is what I want to encourage you to do today, and tomorrow, and the next day, through Holy Week, and to the cross, and to the resurrection, and beyond, as long as this pandemic continues to oppress us down. Is go back on your knees. Ask God to carry you. Listen for God to speak to you. Open your ears, your mind, your heart, your whole being to be filled with the promises that only God can give. Church, when we stop, and pause and bring our self and our concerns to God in prayer. God speaks. 
We might not always be able to hear it exactly the way we think we should. We might not always be able to hear what we want. And it might not be as instantaneous as Jesus saying, God, take this. No, God, I'll do your will. But God speaks. I promise you that. So when the reality of this world is too much, when you're stretched apart and at your wit's end, when your children who are now homeschooled are breathing down your neck, sorry, that's my reality. Go back on your knees. Where do you go when you need some direction? Where do you go when you need some hope? Where do you go when you need some light? Where do you go, friends? Back on your knees again. And there, there, God will meet you, will speak to you, and will pick you up. Thanks be to God. Amen.